Hello, I am Fushai Adane. My guest today is Marissa Tsaye, a political analyst at Mekala University. We will try to raise and discuss quite different current issues. Stay with us. Thank you very much for being the guest of this program, uh, Marissa. Thank you for having me. Okay, uh, just to start with, um, what are the root causes uh, that brought Ethiopia to uh, the current stage? In other words, uh, uh, it's an open secret that it is uh, in such a catastrophic situation. Uh, so, what are the root causes that led it uh, to, the, to this stage? Mm. Okay, thank you. Uh, in fact, this is a very complex question uh, because uh, Ethiopia today is simply a symbol of uh, geopolitical catastrophe, mm. it's uh, a symbol of humanitarian crisis, a symbol of civil war, a symbol of genocidal war mm. perpetrated by the genocidal regimes in alliance with uh, neighboring states and international sponsors. So Ethiopia this time is, it becomes a burden to not only to Ethiopians, mm. but also to African and the world at large. Because uh, Ethiopia becomes one of the hot bidders of um, international crisis. Uh, Ethiopia now is mentioned, Tigray at this time is one of the center of uh, geopolitical war, center of civil war, genocidal war, war, um, war crime, all the bad jargons that we know so far uh, are um, implemented in Tigray. And uh, Tigray is one of the hot spots that defines international politics, African politics, and Horn of African politics. And in fact, it will determine the fate of not only the Tigrayans' fate, as of this uh, time, Tigray will be different. Ethiopia will be different, and the whole. And uh, it will affect, directly or indirectly, the international order. So Ethiopia evolves into the current crisis because of several reasons. Uh, in fact, it's uh, very complex, but I can mention some of the reasons. Yeah, that's what I mean. uh, uh, You know, um, because of the historical reasons, mm. The Ethiopian people were struggling against monarchy and militarism. Mm. As a result, the 17 years armed struggle that was conducted was led by the PLF PRDF mm. was successfully toppled the Derg regime. Mm. Not only the Derg regime, but also it topples the political idea of unitary Ethiopia, mm. assimilationist Ethiopia. Ethiopia that rejects diversity, rights of nations and nationalities. Ethiopia that rejects market economy. So after that, the, in 1991, when the TPLF EPRF came to power, the, EPR, the, the TPLF EPRF addresses the basic contradictions. What were, what were the basic contradictions? National, national oppression, class uh, oppression, mm -hmm. and then the quest for democracy. So the 1995 constitution tries to address, legally and politically, mm -hmm. that Ethiopia is a, land, a state of diversity, uh, the Ethiopian nations and nations have their own indigenous and unique culture. Mm. So we have to legally and politically recognize this idea. Ethiopia is a land of diversity. Mm. So the, uh, the governor, uh, government system, political system should be compatible with existing reality. Mm. So it transformed Ethiopia into a federal multinational state. Recognizing that, mm. Ethiopia, the Ethiopian nations and nationals, the owners of the sovereignty, and the they are entitled to the right self-determination up to uh, and including secession. Mm. This is simply to address the national oppression thesis mm. that the other Ethiopian nations are complaining about Ethiopia because uh, the pre-1919 Ethiopia was ideally it was Amharanized Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. It was led by the Amhara, Shu Amhara elites. They consider Amhara and Ethiopia one and the same. Mm -hmm. So the other nations and nationalities should be Amharanized. They should accept the, Amha the Amhara culture, religion, and language. So the conscience is that these nations and nationalities should be entitled to self-rule, self-administration, mm -hmm. and self-determination. So the political reason, uh, the second reason was, uh, in fact, in Ethiopia, Ethiopia is unique, and it's contradiction. Mm -hmm. We can find in Ethiopia there are unitarist mm -hmm. assimilations, 
unitary assimilation means they want to be a centralized Ethiopia dominated by one nation and one language, one flag, and these all things. Mm. There are also three totals that oppose this idea. There are federalists, dominantly, dominantly led by the Tigrans. Ethiopia should be federalized. Ethiopia is a land of diversity, so that the Ethiopian nation nations should have their own self-rule uh, rights. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is the self-rule and shared rule concept. In, uh, they have their own regions. They are entitled to administer, develop, and uh, their culture, history, even economic development in their own regions. Mm -hmm. At the same time, they can equally participate at the federal level. So the third, uh, shared rule and uh, self-rule concept were introduced. There are also secessionists. It is impossible for Ethiopia to transform, to democratize. The other reason is, you know, in Ethiopia, because of this contradiction, we can uh, witness that th the political system itself is becomes uh, polarized mm -hmm. between the majority and the minority. Geographic minor, uh, the uh, demography becomes a political instrument. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, you know the this motto: ninety-five to five percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The guy is a five percent, uh, yeah. five million people, so that we can eradicate. As to them, yes. Yeah, we can eradicate the guy, so that we can create by eliminating the five percent. Uh, so the demographic, demography becomes politicized. So it creates majority and minority. Mm -hmm. Not only that, it creates also center and periphery. Mm -hmm. Those who are around Addis Ababa are considered themselves as center. Mm -hmm. But. The, those who are uh, on the peripheries, including Tigray, Afar, Somalia, the people in the southern nations and nationalities, Ben Shangul and Gambela were considered not only minority, they consider numerical minority, mm -hmm. at the same time they are periphery. Mm -hmm. So they has to be uh, forced to be part of the center. Everything should be dictated from the center, from Addis Ababa. We call it political shua. Uh, so this creates minority-majority dichotomy. The paradox is, Tigray is numerically, uh, I can consider, the third majority, mm -hmm. next yeah. to the uh, Oromos. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the Amhara, it includes the uh, Ago, uh, many nations Man, here. Say, but yeah. mm -hmm. if we consider Amhara as second majority, mm -hmm. so Tigray should be the so third. Mm -hmm. But they consider Tigray is 5% 5 5 out of the Ethiopia, so con they consider it minority. As mm -hmm. Tigrans, we have never been considered ourselves as a minority. Mm -hmm. Because our contribution, our civilization, our independence, our struggle to maintain our existence and territorial integrity is beyond mm. Because democracy has, democracy has never been a number. Mm. Democracy is about idea. Idea of equality, idea of justice. So the Tigrayan peoples are known for their uh, determination to equality, justice, independence. Mm -hmm. So we have never considered ourselves as a minorities because the number doesn't matter for us. Because we have survived for more than 3,000 years. But for them, that matters. But for them, they consider that. Mm -hmm. They try to define democracy in terms of number mm -hmm. so that they are calculating the pop population number. So it is easy to engulf and eliminate the guy mm -hmm. uh, even by sacrificing f uh, 5 million people mm -hmm. or 10 million, 20 million. That's why they are engaging in this mass wave in the current co conflicts. Mm -hmm. This creates, you know, uh, center periphery, minority majority. And then the political elites at the palace, Minilik Palace, they always think that not as a political elite that transforms society into dem de democracy, development, and modernization, rather simply it creates that a predatory political economy. Mm -hmm. Ethiopia, uh, in fact, it considers that Ethiopia is a 3,000 land of uh, cradle of humanity, these all things. But Ethiopia remains still agrarian. Not only agrarian. Ethiopia, I its development depends on aid, humanitarian uh, aid as well as development aid. And the pa the, those who are in the palace, they consider if you control the Malik Palace, you control the economy, you control the politics. So the all struggles by the people of Ethiopia is simply to put one dictator in the palace so that that dictator is considered as uh, a bread maker, distributor, and a king maker. Mm. So anyone who supports the king, the dictator and the fascist in the palace, 
will survive. Is, will survive. Mm -hmm. Anyone who opposes the fascist, the dictator in the palace, is expected to be eliminated. And Tigray is repeatedly facing this reality. Uh, Tigray has never been ready to, for uh, fascists and dictators coming to eliminate, undermine its contribution from the Milik Palace. So the second reason was, the economic reason was a reason for the current crisis. Mm -hmm. Now, Ethiopia is consuming world economy. Ethiopia is consuming African development supports. Ethiopia is consuming, Abiy Ahmed's Ethiopia consumes, is consuming the 27 years accumulated wealth of Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Simply to serve a, a fascist in the, the palace mm -hmm. for his genocidal uh, project. So Ethiopia fails to produce democracy, to transform its economy, at the same time to live in peace and harmony. Mm -hmm. So that because of uh, internally, because of lack of legitimacy, political crisis, economic failure, because Ethiopia at this time is simply a predatory state. It consumes its own resource mm -hmm. for war. Mm -hmm. So we can't expect Ethiopia will have a development. Uh, so, okay. uh, you know, there is no possibility for Ethiopia to develop and transform the rural people, the peasant, and the even create employment for the educated in the urban areas. The inflation mm -hmm. is high. Mm -hmm. uh, even the country is simply a dumping center of international armaments mm -hmm. so that Ethiopia is at this time a lucrative center mm -hmm. for the wholesale armament to Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. So it is a crisis that creates that not only civil war, it's a dumping center for small and light weapons at the same time. Um, Ethiopia is also a, a proxy center mm -hmm. for all regional actors including Eritrea, Somalia, uh, even South Sudan, Sudan, there are also it's a proxy center for ideological conflicts, geopolitical conflicts. So, in fact, Ethiopia is sacrificing its own te territorial integrity, its sovereignty, its legitimacy. It, it consumes its economy. But it, this all uh, failures leads to, uh, to make Tigray a victim because the Ethiopian mm -hmm. regime is trying to, uh, is preaching that I'm engaging in this war simply to maintain Ethiopia's territorial integrity. Mm. Uh, Ahmed says that repeatedly says Ethiopia will not will survive. It will not be dis dismembered. And practically, Abiy Ahmed is the only leader within five year, uh, years, within four years, leads Ethiopia into collapse and dismemberment. It has never been. Say, even the Derg regime was by far better than Haile Selassie and the other leaders. But Abiy Ahmed was totally, he leads Ethiopia into catastrophe, into dismemberment. Uh, I expect uh, after this war, Ethiopia will, will be totally different. So mm. the Ethiopia we know will not, be, uh, will not be in the future. We will have a different Ethiopia, we will, not have, we will have also a different Tigray. That's why at this time Ethiopia is, mm, uh, you know, is a proxy center for ideological conflict, the East and the West, for geopolitical conflict. Uh, it simply is also it's a playing ground between uh, the hegemonic, uh, the fascists who, as, uh, who aspire hegemony in the Horn of Africa, it's as a 4K, uh, and uh, in fact, Mohammed Farmaj is already gone. You know, Ethiopia is uh, uh, in between the Red Sea, and the Nile, so it attracts everyone who, who is interested to destabilize this region. And Abiy Ahmed is uh, the most preferable leader in Ethiopia for those who believe it is easy to destabilize the horn and control and extract resource. That's why this time, for me, Ethiopia in all aspects is a burden to the world. Uh, not only a burden to the Ethiopians, because this time uh, Ethiopians are, at, um, are totally at uh, feeling uncertainty. No one knows what will be, what will happen tomorrow, what will happen after a year. And the Ethiopia's fate is now it becomes normal. Ethiopia will be dismembered. This is the common discussion and the citizens. So the world is watching and so trying we'll to be, manage we'll be the back catastrophe. To that. For that. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, we'll discuss about that later. Okay, uh, that's why I interrupted you. Uh, why did Abiy Ahmed? Uh, choose uh, to take such uh, a way 
uh, or a pass uh, in handling the case of Tigray? Uh, you know, Avi Ahmed is, uh, is a rare uh, case in Ethiopian leadership mm. history. Mm. You know, he tries to um, become the seventh king mm. uh, and his prof the prophet of his mother. And uh, he tries to uh, become a king, not only in Ethiopia, in the whole. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, he was um, misled by the international community because they untimely uh, branded him as uh, the young African leader, reformer, mm -hmm. winners of Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, in fact, Abiy Ahmed was Abiy Ahmed was a mistake to Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Historically, we can consider a mistake. Mm -hmm. Because of two things. In the first place, he has not the capacity to lead this country, this very complex country. Not only very complex country, geopolitically important, a, a state of 120 million population, a state of a number of contradictions. Mm. But Abiy Ahmed was, uh, you know, those who recruited him to the palace, mm. they will regret that. It was a historical mistake. So Abi Ahmed is simply uh, become a problem to Ethiopia because he has no the capacity and he's not also ready to know what Ethiopia is. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one is, you know, uh, Abi Ahmed mishandled the place of Tigray mm -hmm. because he wants to reinvent Minilik II. He wants to reinvent Haider Selassie and Fash Dirk. So he becomes, he, he does not consider himself as a successor of Melissa and the Haile Mariam de Salim. Rather, he wants to continue the, uh, the history of uh, Menelik, Haile Selassie and the, the monarchical system. The monarchical system and the fascist military system, dark mm. system. Mm. So he, w he considered the 27 years as dark era. Uh, he undermines the contribution of the Tigrayans to Ethiopia as well as to the current regime. Uh, so, as a beginning, he considered that he, is a, he wants to be the king, not a leader, a president or a prime minister. Uh, then he considered that Tigray, because of its history, Tigray has never accepted any forms of monarchical, mm -hmm. even in the first, um, we can mention the first Wayani mm -hmm. peasant protest. So, so that uh, Abiy Ahmed considered that Tigray will be a challenge. On one hand, Tigray will be a challenge for Abiy Ahmed. He's, he, uh, he was right. Because Abiy Ahmed has no... You, you mean the way he handled Tigray was right and uh, is still right? Uh, it was wrong. Okay. But uh, mm. for me, it, is, it was inevitable for Abiy mm. Ahmed mm. to... You know, because his policy was wrong. Mm. He wanted to prize Midlik II, Haile Selassie and uh, Dirk. Mm. He wanted to see uh, a weak Tigray divided Tigray. Mm. Tigray that uh, he, wa he was determined and he is also determined to undermine its history, mm. its contribution, its civilization and uh, even its numeric status, ge geopolitical status. Mm. And you know, he, uh, he prefers Eritrea mm. Tigray. That's why he is proudly presenting that Eritrea is inter in Ethiopia, but Tigray is out. Mm -hmm. And he prized his as Aforki. Mm -hmm. As his mentor and his father. So the reason is that maybe if Abiy Ahmed prizes uh, Minlik II, he, he was right to face this crisis. Mm -hmm. Because uh, he tried to level the Tigrayans as anti-Ethiopia as uh, cancer, weed, uh, even uh, he considered the Tigrayans as contrabandist. He considered the Tigrayans dedications, contributions. Even Hainas of the midnight, uh, midday, I mean. Yeah, the Haina. Mm. Um, and so uh, all the bad jargons, mm. he tried to humiliate, segregate the Tigrayans. Because he considered that the Tigrayans are not ready for any forms of assimilation from the Lake Palace. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, but, uh, but he was in trap, you know. On one hand, he wants to undermine Tigray and its contribution. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, 
he could not be a legitimate leader in Ethiopia by undermining Tigray's history, culture, civilization, independence. For example, mm. uh, he, he wants to build an Ethiopia, Greater Ethiopia, Pan Africanist Ethiopia, Menlik Ethiopia, Halslas Ethiopia. He wants to promote Ethiopianism mm. by undermining the ethno nationalists. But you know, uh, everything, the ideas for Ethiopia today were evolved from Tigray. For example, mm. he wants to prize Orthodox, he wants to get the support of the Orthodox Church. But the origin of the Orthodox in Ethiopia is Tigray, Muslim, mm. um, the Stephen Seven, all the religious sects are from Tigray. He wants to take uh, Adwa as a symbol of independence and heroism by undermining the Tigrayans contribution, by undermining Alulas and Mangeshas and the Tigrayan contributions. Mm. But at the same time, you know, Adwa is in Tigray. Alula is from Tigray and Mangesha is from Tigray and Tigray is the cradle of independence, mm. the origin of Pan-Africanism. So that, you know, these are the contradictions that Abiy cannot escape. So finally he wants to see, he wants to control Tigray, to legitimize his leadership of king of Ethiopia, mm. but he is not interested to engage with the Tigrayans, to bring democracy development in Tigray. Rather, controlling Tigray by eliminating Tigray and its people. That's why his social advisor, Daniel Kavret, said that the Tigrayans should be eliminated from history, from name, from map, from memory. Mm. The reason is eliminating the Tigrayans so that in order to control Tigray. So he's, uh, he's also aspiring not only to control Tigray, but also to control the Red Sea. Mm. So not only, uh, uh, you know, he, he's supported by the Amara elites. Their reason is Amharanizing Ethiopia and the whole. Mm. They will try to uh, retake Eritrea and um, they consider Ethiopia is after the Red Sea and Tigray is a, a problem. So they want to, to, eliminate, to control Tigray, eliminate the Tagarus so that they will go to the Red Sea. Uh, so they will be uh, hegemonic leaders in the whole. The other reason why Abiy Ahmed mishandled Tigray is, you know, he selected the bad leaders. Mm -hmm. Abiy Ahmed is, uh, in fact, not only a friend, but uh, he for his, his mentor, his master. Abiy Ahmed is a junior partner. A close friend of Isaias Afork, he cannot be, you know, he can't expect good things from Isaias mm. because Isaias is inherently destabilizer. Mm. Isaias is inherently anti Tigray. Mm. So that's why he came up with this co concept of political hustle. Mm. Mm. That means cleaning the Tigrayan legacy not only from Tigray but also from the whole. Mm. Uh, want, Isaias wants to reconfigure the whole. So, mm, not only eliminating the Tigrays, but also it's a kind of Berlin conference. The agreement between Aviji, the Amhara elites, and the Safarke is simply partitioning Tigray into three spheres of influence. The areas of Tigray north of the main road are expected to be part of Eritrea, and the areas um, Walkait and uh, Raya will be part of Amhara. The other part, Magale and around, will be. Uh, under the influence of Abiy Ahmed, so that Tigray will be eliminated from map, from name, at the same time from history. Isaias is also aspiring that Eritreanizing Ethiopia and the whole. On, the, on Abiy's side, Abiy is trying to Ethiopianizing the whole by even undermining Eritrean sovereignty. That's why he considers the Eritreans' 13 years struggle is simply a wastage of, because the Eritreans believe that they are Ethiopians. Maybe uh, Isaias considers is it, he becomes Isaias becomes more Ethiopian than even the Amharan and the Oromo elites. Mm. That's why he consider um, the Ethiopian issue is my, his internal is, uh, issue. This uh, creates that. In fact, uh, the third reason why Abiy Ahmed mishandled Tigray is he was prized by the international community. Mm. So Tigray is considered a, as a region, regardless of its contribution. Tigray is too big to be mishandled by Abiy Ahmed, mm -hmm. to be defeated by Abiy Ahmed. That's why 
Tigray is surviving, struggling, and defeating its enemy. Not only Abiy Ahmed, but also it has Afwarki, Farmajo, and their international supporters. So the reason is, the international community is misleading Abiy Ahmed that he is uh, the leader of the great, the Horn of Africa, African mm. reformer, so that he takes this for granted that he has international support, financial support, economic support, technological support, so that he can easily undermine Tigray, uh, the Tigrayan leadership and Tigrayan people. Mm. Even that the world was silent for uh, for him, because he considered uh, he, they considered him as uh, the one who is struggling for maintaining Ethiopia's territorial integrity. In fact, Abiy Ahmed is the one who is destabilizing, dismembering Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. He could be the last leader. Mm. What do you mean by the last leader? Uh, the, the last leader. I mean that if Abiy Ahmed continues in this way. I expect that the worst case scenario will come into a reality, that dismembering of Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Because this is not a new issue, you know. We were witnessing uh, the collapse of Somalia in 1991, mm -hmm. the collapse of Yugoslavia in 1991, the collapse of uh, Libya uh, in 2011. Mm -hmm. So it's an, uh, Ethiopia is not different. If Abiy Ahmed continues in this uh, destructive war, he could be the last leader. Ethiopia will be dismembered. Uh, so we will have a different scenario. Uh, the dismemberment of Ethiopia will be uh, will have a dominant effect on the whole. <laughs> so uh, the other reason for Abiy Ahmed to mishandle Tigray is, you know, maybe he is a graduate of technology. He was a former uh, staff of uh, INSA, and he is taking that. He is introducing technology. He's misusing technology for genocidal purpose. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the Middle East, uh, UAE, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, they prize Isaiah Safurki and Abiy Ahmed as stabilizers, new leaders, new brides in the region. Even they were, um, they got this royal uh, award mm -hmm. from Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates. Mm -hmm. That means they become agents of the Middle East country in the region. They consider Tigray is a problem, the PLF is a problem in their intervention in the whole. So eliminating the PLF, eliminating Tigray, will be easy for them to control the whole. Not only Eritrea, but also Ethiopia, so that the Middle uh, UAE, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, even Turkey, uh, are actively engaging in this by trying to test their technology, the drone technology. So uh, in this case, Abiy Ahmed, because of these reasons, because of his incapaci uh, weak capacity to understand Ethiopia and to lead the country, because of his, uh, uh, his alliance of evils, the Amhara elites, Eritrea, Somalia, any evil elite who is interested to intervene in the Tigrayan war is welcomed by Abiy Ahmed. And uh, the, interna the superpowers are also, they committed a mistake. You know, they miss, you know, they consider Abiy Ahmed as a capable leader, a reform leader. This is a historical mistake for the support powers as well as regional powers. Mm -hmm. They will be responsible, at least morally, for destabilizing Ethiopia. If not legally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but legally, mm -hmm. they can consider, they mm -hmm. don't care mm -hmm. whether Ethiopia is um, a democratic state or not. Mm -hmm. Because they, they, they prefer their interests, not uh, simply. They are not responsible for the failures in Ethiopia. Rather, morally, they will be responsible because the collapse of, the region collapse can lead into state collapse. Mm -hmm. And it creates humanitarian crisis, geopolitical crisis. So that ultimately, they, uh, in fact, uh, they are okay with that, you know, uh, when the, they see states are uh, failed status, collapsed states, they say that, we, sorry, we were wrong. Mm -hmm. And they expect that even uh, the heads, the UN Secretary General, African Union, the superpowers, they will say that. Mm. We were wrong. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, let's proceed to the next question. Mm. How do you uh, evaluate the way uh, Tigray accepted and handled uh, Abiy Ahmed as a Prime Minister at those times, uh, in other words, four years ago? Uh, this is, I think, uh, equally important uh, question that should be discussed. Mm. Uh, you know, Tigray's response to Abiy Ahmed is, uh, at the beginning it was positive. You know, 
the people of Tigray has been struggling for self-rule, self-determination, economic transformation, mm. equality and justice in Ethiopia. So um, the people of Tigray, they engage in the 17 years armed struggle. And mm. that struggle changes Ethiopia. And Ethiopia survived, uh, survived for 27 years mm. in development, peace and security. Mm. So when Haile Mariam de Saling rep uh, replaced, um, came to power after uh, the late Prime Minister Mala Zenawi, everyone was happy. Because we integrants, uh, in our history, we believe in equality. Not in domination or assimilation, rather federalism, equality. We are among equals in Ethiopia, even though our contribution is greater than anyone. Uh, so uh, it's not the Tigrayan people at the, at, the, at the beginning were also pushing for EPRDF to reform itself. Mm. Not only the EPRDF, but also the PLF mm. to reform itself so that to address the development, democracy, and security issues, uh, justice issues in Tigray, good governance issues. When Abiy Ahmed came to power, everyone was happy. And in fact, for me, I had, I had a doubt. Mm. You know, Abiy Ahmed came to power through democratic means, mm. because democracy not necessarily brings uh, de democratic leaders. Mm. Even it can bring fascists like mm. Mussolini, mm. Hitler, and Abiy Ahmed. Mm. So Abiy Ahmed was, EPRDF was elected government at that time. Mm. Abiy Ahmed was elected by the EPRDF Council, so he, he was democrat uh, democratically elected within the EPRDF. Even though they were uh, perpetrating uh, uh, what you call it, protests in Oromia. Mm -hmm. But he uses both, uh, his, um, both mechanisms. On one hand, he wants to. He was in the, within the EPRDF. He was struggling from within. At the same time, he was supporting. Uh, in fact, later he pre he revealed himself that he was supporting and leading the protesters in Oromia and Amhara. Mm -hmm. uh, so at that time, it was easy for you know the Tigrans were considered as simply Tigrans were a leader, and uh, with Tigrans had a good contribution to Ethiopia. Ethiopia survived for seven, 27 years. It has never been in that, uh, that history. Mm -hmm. And it will not be. For 27 years, Ethiopia was different. Mm -hmm. So that Ethiopia will not come back. I, I don't see. Uh, unless uh, I, I could be wrong. But uh, it was a golden time for Ethiopia. Relatively a golden time. Mm -hmm. It was not absolute. Uh, then at the beginning, the people of Tigray was welcoming Abiy Ahmed. Even the leadership is also uh, welcoming Abiy Ahmed because let's the Oromo lead the country because it's the part within the PRDF and the Oromos believe in equality. But when he controlled the power, uh, he immediately uh, began to segregate, alienate, humiliate the Tigrayans in his documentaries, in his speeches. So he wants to prize, uh, even he, he called, uh, his inter he was interested to have uh, normalization with Isaias. In fact, he was working secretly with him. Mm -hmm. uh, he invited all the anti-Tigrian forces from Eritrea. They were in, uh, in Eritrea for 20 years, including uh, Burhan Nagas and uh, Andargache was against all opposition, all anti Tigrayan forces were in Eritrea. They were trained, recruited by Isaiah Saforki. Abiy Ahmed invited all of them. And Isaiah also welcomed as a, peacemaker, uh, as a peacemaker. Then all together they, he prized Minlik II. He never mentioned Johannes or Alula or even uh, the Battle of Mathema. He, he reluctantly mentioned Melles. Uh, he undermined the contribution of Tigrans. He cleaned all the Tigrayan uh, political and uh, civil servant uh, appointees. Then, and in general, he leveled the 27 years leadership as a dark era. Then 
he established a commission, uh, border commission, to undermine the territorial integrity. Mm. And he undermined the, the constitution itself, the federal constitution that recognized sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Then the people of Tigray immediately realized that this Avi Ahmed is simply the resurrections of Dirk, resurrection of Haile Selassie, resurrection of Milik. Mm -hmm. He's not a democratic leader. He will evolve into fascism because he picks these ideas, majority minority ideas. The Tigrayans are five. Uh, he was sponsoring Isat, and Isat was the leader in this uh, 95 to 5 percent uh, idea. So this creates that the people of Tigray, at the beginning, there was a support for Abiy Ahmed, but when Abiy Ahmed tries to uh, undermine, alienate, and uh, segregate and humiliate the Tigrayan contribution, the people of Tigray timely start the legal and political struggle. The Tigran, you know the slogans, Tigray bows only to God. Uh, so, so you mean uh, Tigray has had no problem with regard to accepting uh, uh, Abiy Ahmed as the Prime Minister of the nation uh, in the beginning, right? Yeah, you know, it's mm. he was in the PRDF. As long as he respected uh, the constitutional order, mm. the right self determination, development, and equality, he could be from EPRDF or not. So, at the mm. beginning, it was simply a reform within the EPRDF, the Tigran people are considering. But practically, he becomes anti EPRDF, anti Tigran. So, the people of Tigray started the legal and political struggle first. Mm. Okay. They called for uh, respect the constitution, respect the sovereignty of nations and nationalities. Respect the grass conservation sacrifice uh, and stop undermining, humiliating, and imprisoning the Tigrayans. That was the slogans. And uh, Tigray will never bow to any forms of assimilations and uh, authoritarian leadership, fascist leadership. But to God. Oh, yeah, Tigray bows to okay. God. Only to God. Okay. Uh, it is an open secret that uh, the joint forces of uh, 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 Isaias Afork or the regime in Asmara, uh, Amhara Fano, Amhara Militia, Amhara Special Forces, uh, the Ethiopian, uh, the National uh, Defense Force of the Ethiopian Nation, and uh, former forces of um, Mohammed Farmaju, I think, yes. Uh, along with uh, their external uh, sponsors, have uh, in daylight massacred the people of Tigray. Uh, and in the face of the international community, right? So um, the world was and is, of course, uh, still watching, right? So, so what would all this mean in the history of uh, modern human uh, in general? and the Ethiopian nation in particular, uh, with this regard. Has, by the way, the country ever had such a coincidence in its history? Um, uh, in fact, partly, uh, history is repeating itself, mm. because the leaders in the Menelik Palace always, they betray Tigray. Mm. And I think uh, Gaurav Baikaran was the first uh, Tigrayan intellectual who realized that Menelik, the, those who uh, in the Menelik Palace undermined Tigray. That's why he, con uh, he criticized Menelik. Menelik didn't consider the Tigrans as his own people. And uh, Menelik was dividing Tigray into two by making a secret agreement between Italy and Seoul. He, t he tries his best to undermine Tigray. Mm. The same is true for Haile Selassie. He was uh, making, an, uh, he was uh, inviting the British Real Air Force Mm. to undermine the first Wayani rebellion. It was a rebellion for self-rule, mm. uh, fair taxation, mm. and se self-administration. Uh, we call it the, the Abu Agarab, uh, the first Wayani led by Blata Haile Mariam Radha. The same is true for Mangsta Haile Mariam, who invited the Russian leaders and their armaments to undermine Tigray and Eritrea. Mm. So Tigray is a victim of uh, the Ethiopian leaders. It has been a victim. In fact, uh, you know, they consider that we will not create a unitarist assimilation Ethiopia. Mm. 
in, 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 Ethiopia, in the presence of the Tigrayans, they consider that because Tigray is a challenge for them because the Tigrayan thought it is clear. Tigray wants to respect our identity, history, and culture, self rule, and respect the other nations and nationalities to, to administer the, themselves and recognize their identity and history. So Tigrayan thought in Ethiopia has been a federal thought. Now it could be a different. You know, uh, we tried several times. We sacrificed several times to democratic Ethiopia. But the response is genocide, uh, war crime, crime against humanity, atrocity, treason, betrayal. So um, I, I don't think that we will continue in this vicious All cycle. All this in the face of the international community, okay. Mm. This was the history of Ethiopia. Mm. The only thing is uh, the magnitude of uh, the atrocity, you know, now it becomes exceptional, you know, uh, Ethiopia is committing genocidal war on Tigray. Avi Hamad is committing genocide, all types of crime. Maybe we will have a new jargon to define this atrocity in Tigray. Mm. You know, genocide becomes normal. Mm. You know, the international community is also tolerating genocide. Mm. You know, it's uh, the highest and the last crime in the world so far. But mm. in Tigray it becomes normal. Even for Avi, genocide is normal. War crime, crime against humanity. Even he proudly presented that his uh, army is committing this simply, uh, you know, uh, simply uh, like killing uh, his belligerents. Mm. So w the magnitude is different in Ethiopia. You know, it's a shameful because Tigray becomes a victim of uh, its own. Uh, become victimized by its own state. So far we are in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. I don't think so will be because, uh, you know, you can't live with a genocidal, a genocidal regime, a genocidal state. The same is true, you know, uh, Abiy Ahmed is deceiving everyone. Mm -hmm. He deceives the African Union. He, pri he pretends uh, he is the leader of Pan-Africanism, Ethiopia is uh, uh, the home of Pan-Africanism. Uh, it hosts the African Union, Ethiopia is fighting, uh, I don't know, uh, imperialism, external forces. You know, the African Union is, the African Union is idea of Pan-Africanism evolved from the, from Adwa. But the African Union is, um, is reluctant, even uh, it's called that Abiy uh, Ahmed and the are focus aggression as Law enforcement activities. So um, uh, we can't expect anything from the African Union, but it is an, an institution in Africa. As an institution, we can respect because the international system works in, like this. Your idea should be placed in the nation, in the regional organizations, and international organizations. Mm -hmm. So the African Union, obviously, it supports dictators, states, leaders. Does it have such an experience or yeah, history? You know. Uh, mm -hmm. In 1994, there was a Rwandan genocide. The African Union, uh, its history was a history of failure. It failed to prevent the gen Rwandan genocide. You mean it did nothing to prevent? Uh, yeah, mm. it did nothing. Mm -hmm. The same is true. The African Union uh, failed to promote democracy, uh, elected governments, and the soul. Um, mm. You know, we know the history of Africa. Mm. Uh, so, in fact, there is a slogan in the African Union: "Never again to Rwandan mm. genocide." Mm. But this is simply a slogan, you know. Uh, there was uh, atrocities, civil war in Sudan, South Sudan, everywhere. Else. Even though, in its constitutive act, it says that we will reinvent the pre-colonial identities. We will respect family. We will promote democracy and African culture. Mm -hmm. But in practice, African Union ha is a fail. Uh, its history is history of failure. So. I don't, uh, in fact, it had not the capacity, moral capacity, institutional and economic capacity, uh, as well as military capacity to enforce, and, uh, because um, the history is the same. So we should not expect anything from Africa. Rather, simply, it's an African institution. Mm -hmm. So we have to recognize the institution, not uh, his contributions. The same is true for the international community, you know. The UN is also, you know, the UN was, uh, it uh, failed in Rwanda, in Yugoslavia, even Somalia, because the United Nations is it's a union of states, not people. Mm. 
the international order works is simply a uh, international uh, relation is a relation of states not peoples even though there are ideas you know human rights democracy uh, this organized against gender violence against uh, genocide the responsibility to protect the responsibility to protect means if the national government fails to protect the rights and democracy of its citizens the international community is responsible to protect the citizens from their national government as well as from external aggressions mm -hmm. the state can be uh, the, the a state can violate uh, citizens right because of two things one thing is if the state the government is autocratic fascist so if the fascist government commits genocide crime against humanity against its own citizens sovereignty will not be a problem the international community is responsible to protect the citizens in that state by undermining sovereignty that was the doctrine mm. the second one is a government could be willing to democratize develop its own people mm. but it can lack uh, it, if it lacks capacity the international community has the responsibility to support the government to build capacity so that to address the democratic and security needs of its citizens mm. so these are jargons in international system simply we learn them in the in the class of political science uh, human rights democracy jargon but in practice we have to be realistic mm -hmm. you know international system is a system of states tigray is considered simply a region in ethiopian state uh, in fact uh, antonio Guterres was uh, praising avi Ahmed as african reformer um, even he failed to recognize to condemn that Eritrea is participating Eritrea was participating in Tigray genocide, and he he is trying his best to de defend Avi. But in 1994, there was also Kofi Annan. Uh, you know, in that time there was a jo Rwanda genocide, and uh, when Kofi Annan completed his mission, he said that sorry, I had the opportunity to prevent the Rwanda genocide. So you mean it's not something new uh, for the international community and uh, the, for the African Union too, right? Uh, we should not expect, you know, uh, we, we should be realistic. We expect nothing, uh, we expect taking its history into account. Huh? Taking its history into account, we, mm. we can't expect anything. So it's but always it's, it's what you expected already. Yeah, I expect. Mm. But the initiative was established simply to defend democracy, development and citizens. It but failed. in practice it failed, you in mean? In practice it failed, yeah. Okay. The same is true for the UN, you know. The mm. UN is a union of states. At that, uh, we should be realistic that... Uh, the United Nations first defends states, then citizens. Mm. So that it's simply the status. For example, you know, at the beginning, the West was surprising Abiy Ahmed. They supporting Abiy Ahmed. They considered law enforcement. But later, when they uh, began to witness the atrocities, they changed their mindset. At least morally, they supported. They criticized Abiy Ahmed. But on the east, you know, China was a good friend of uh, TPLF and DPRDF and Russia. But Russia and China, they were voting down in the UN Security Council. So simply they are, they are sacrificing Tigray for geopolitical reasons. They consider Tigray's issue is an internal issue to Ethiopia. Even though Tigray's contribution is bigger than its number, the international system. So uh, partly the U United Nations is, is failing, it continues to fail to defend the people of the world, uh, the people of Tigray. Yeah, you mean the world as well. Even in the world, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. We, uh, we are part of the world, it's okay. Yeah, part of the world. So, yeah. but uh, what matters is power. Uh, world politics, what matters is power. We will come to that. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, and the same is true for the superpowers. You know, the uh, superpowers are so... Uh, uh, yeah, 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 it's almost the same. Uh, you already mentioned it. Yeah. Uh, the UN is uh, an organization of states, you mean. So, yeah. in other words, the superpowers, it's obvious, right? Yeah. Power politics matters, you know. Uh, so they yeah. consider Tigray issue is an Ethiopian issue. But now, because of the atrocities, because of the aggression, because of its impact to destabilization of Ethiopia and the whole, now they re realize that Tigray is not simply a region. Tigray is not simply five million, uh, a region of five million populations. So the one who controls Tigray con controls the whole politics. If Tigray is destabilized, the horn will be, for sure, will be destabilized. So they realize that the crisis in Tigray will affect the American interests, mm. the Russian and China interests, the Middle East interests. Uh, you know, Avi and Isaias, they, they are already exposed that 
they are incapable to undermine Tigray, to defeat Tigray. Mm. So the, uh, there, is, uh, there is in this uh, geopolitical course, the one who controls, controls Tigray controls the Horn of African politics. Mm. So Tigray is not simply a region or simply a uh, geographical area. Rather, Tigray is the center of civilization. Not only uh, Tigray is not simply a center of resource, Strategy. the centers mm -hmm. of the idea of state in the whole, mm. the center of civilization, the center of religion. If you control Tigray, you control the whole. Mm. Mm. So that Tigray, uh, the people of Tigray is struggling to defend its civilization, its geopolitical position. At the same time, Tigray is struggling to, de to defeat, to stop genocide and defeat its enemy. So now the world is realizing that the UN, the African Union, everyone is recognizing that Tigray's issue is not simply an issue in Ethiopia, it's not a Horn of African issue, rather Tigray's agenda is international agenda. Mm -hmm. No one will not under, no one will undermine Tigray. Tigray is bigger than its size, its number. Because Tigray survives all the atrocities across history. Mm -hmm. Since the First World War, Second World War, Cold War, and so all things. Mm -hmm. So if you undermine Tigray, that means you are committing calculation so that your result will be failure. So the people of Tigray, now the world is uh, becoming to recognize that we have to recognize Tigray's question. Tigray is not simply struggling for uh, self-rule. Rather, it is struggling for self-defense, self-determination, defending its civilization shaping its vision in the future so that now the world is clear that no even uh, antonio guterres uh, said that you cannot defeat the tigrians yeah all right, all right. okay mm, let's take into account our time into yeah. Account, yeah so uh, of course you touched it a bit but to uh, go uh, further tigray as you mentioned is uh, uh, in a defensive uh, war right oh, yeah to uh, ensure its survival or existence or safety and security of its people. Uh, so, um, what is the ultimate goal? Of course, uh, you have touched it a bit, but mm -hmm. uh, just to go further, if you have uh, mm -hmm. more uh, in this regard, what is the ultimate goal of the Tigrayan forces in this regard? Yes. Uh, just in short. Sorry. Yeah. Mm. You know, the Tigrayan uh, history of struggle is clear. Mm. Uh, the, there is no difference in the cause of the struggle mm. in the 17 years and uh, the 27 years and now the same uh, in the first place it's all about self-defense Tigray is trying to defend itself from national fascism regional fascism horn of african fascism mm. Tigray is struggling to defend from isas afork's ambition in fascism from Abiy Ahmed's fascism and uh, regional hegemony, from the Amara elitist fascism. So it's, uh, and they are regional and international sponsors. Mm. So it's uh, uh, self-defense. So by this, Tigray is struggling to stop genocide, war crime, crime against humanity, all forms of atrocities. So it, this is a natural right, conditional right, and at the same time it is the responsibility of the Tigrayans to fulfill their historical mission. That is, defending Tigray civilization, defending Tigray's territorial integrity, as they at the same time shaping the Tigrayan future. So uh, I think there are four important concepts here. The struggle in Tigray is all about self-defense, the first. Uh, the second one is, is about uh, the uh, the self-defense, territorial, maintaining territorial integrity, this is an immediate, we can call it core interest of the struggle. Mm -hmm. Self-defense, maintaining Tigray's territorial integrity. At least the current uh, conditional territorial integrity of Tigray. The second phase will be, it's all about international observed referendum. Mm -hmm. You know, Tigray is facing atrocity, crime, betrayal, treason by the Ethiopian Defense Force, Air Transforces, Forces, and other international as well as uh, regional institutions. Mm -hmm. So this time, uh, we have to break the cycle, vicious cycle. I, uh, I hope the new Tigray will be different. But, you know, I have only one vote. I can express my interest, mm -hmm. uh, taking, uh, as a student of political science, 
and learning the Ethiopian political history and the treasons and atrocities, I can say this is enough for Tigray, so that the Tigrayan vision should be different. But the, the decision could be... Uh, up to the people. Up to the people. It could be remain Ethiopia. But yes. the Ethiopians, the Tigrayans are struggling for international observed referendum, the second phase. The last phase could be, you know, bringing the genociders into justice, uh, compensation, this could be the issues. But finally, the, the goal of the struggle could be making Tigray part of the international democratic community. That means making Tigray, you know, we are in the world. We are not only in Ethiopia. Mm. Yeah, we are in the world. So we want to be part of the democratic community. We, want, we should not be part of the fascists, the genociders, and the undemocratic world. So the vision is th the vision of a new Tigray. The, the vision of new Tigray means Tigray's future will be defined by the Tigrayans, by the sacrifice of the heroes and heroines of the Tigran. That's why, you know, Tigray is fighting this unimaginable forces, you know, the Eritrean forces, the Egyptian forces. It, th this could be a new history in the world. Tigray will be a departure in military uh, study, in uh, political studies, social science, natural science studies. This war will shape a new world order. So that the reason is we will shape the new Tigray the new Tigray will be uh, a new Tigray which is part of the democratic community, culturally, politically, economically. So we have to believe that we are not simply in Ethiopia. Uh, it will be decided by the referendum. But Tigray is part of the world. Okay. So that, that will be the vision. So the goal could be immediately self-defense and maintain territorial integrity. In the second phase, uh, referendum. And the final phase, and the vision of a new Tigray, that is part of making Tigray part of the democratic community. Thank you. Uh, let's make this uh, our last question. Uh, let's see the uh, role the Tigrayan forces may have in maintaining uh, the peace and security uh, of the African, I mean the Horn of Africa, uh, just in few uh, words. Yeah, uh, mm. Tigray has been uh, the political center, military center, not only center of civilization, but also political all political changes uh, since 90, not only since 1960s, 70s, and 90s, Tigray is a center of change, idea. Political changes, military, the peasant protest, 17 years armed struggle, student movement, every change emanates from Tigray. So uh, Tigray is a pacemaker in, uh, in geopolitics, security, and uh, even nation building. So I expect that the Tigrayan forces will be, the, uh, you know, defeating the Eritrean force, the fascist Eritrean force, defeating the Ethiopian force, so that these forces are forces of uh, genocide, forces of fascism, forces of uh, regional authoritarianism. So Tigray is defeating, undermining, so that we will have a new security framework after that. So Tigray will be politically a new center, and security-wise, uh, the Tigrayan forces will be a new regional force in the Horn of Africa, pacemaker that defeats authoritarianism, fascism, genocidal regimes. So Tigray will, as part of its history, it has been contributing for stability, development in the Horn of Africa. For example, we can take the 27 years. It was the PLF led Ethiopia and the Horn. Ethiopia was strong, uh, stronger regional balancer role uh, in peacekeeping development in countries a lot. The mission of TDF, Tigray and TDF will be the same. So those who support Abiy Ahmed and Isaias Afurki will change their mind that Tigray is too big to be undermined. So that Tigray is a center of uh, security, development, and geopolitics. So they will come to Tigray and appreciate its sacrifice and TDF and the Tigrayan forces will be a force of stability, development, security in the Horn of Africa. Because, you know, the geopolitical setting of Tigray is unique. Mm -hmm. Tigray is in between the Red Sea, Nile, and Babi el -Mandar, in between Eritrea and uh, Ethiopia. So Tigray is a pivotal in the Horn. That's why earlier I mentioned that the one who controls Tigray 
if a democratic regime controls Tigray, the Horn will be stabilized. If the fascist regimes like Isaias and Abiji controls Tigray, the Horn will be in crisis and destabilized. So TDF is it's a force of self-determination. It's a force of anti-genocide, anti-fascism, anti-authoritarianism, so that it will be a force of democracy, development. And then the superpowers, regional powers, I, I hope they will change their mind. They will recognize Tigray's contribution. They will change the heroic struggle of TDF. And TDF will be part of the new security framework in the Horn of Africa. So the people who are struggling for self-determination will be uh, liberated and appreciated TDF and the Tigrayan contribution. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I don't think so that you have uh, something that you would like to add. If yes, uh, this were all what I have for today. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much indeed for being the guest of this program once again. Thank you.